Hi, I'm Ben Coleman. I'm the Associate Curator for American Art at the Detroit Institute of Arts. And today I'm going to speak for just a few minutes about one of the most imposing and monumental works from the museum's collection of American decorative arts, the piece you see on your screen, a group of stained glass windows created in 1890 by the American painter and stained glass designer, John Lafarge for the First Unitarian Church in Detroit. When they were new, these windows were installed in the recently constructed second home for the First Unitarian Church of Detroit, built in 1889 and 1890. That Romanesque revival building, designed by the Detroit firm of Donaldson and, and Meyer, stood on the southeast corner of Woodward Avenue and Edmond Place in the Brush Park neighborhood of Detroit. The windows were installed on the gable end of the building, directly facing Woodward Avenue, over the entrance porch. Each of the three windows is a memorial to a prominent early member of the congregation. On the left side of the grouping, the so-called Helping Angel Panel, a memorial to Royal Clark Remake, one of the so-called Lumber Barons of 19th century Detroit, who built his fortune harvesting Michigan lumber in the forests north of Flint, Michigan. The center and tallest panel, depicting allegorical figures of faith and hope, is a memorial to Charles Merrill, a one-time business partner of Remix, who established his fortune through lumber mills in Saginaw and Muskegon, Michigan. On the right side of your screen, Another memorial to Merrill, a monumental marble fountain designed by the New York firm Carrier and Hastings, commissioned by his daughter. It originally stood, as you see it on your screen, in downtown Detroit, but in the 1920s was moved to Palmer Park. The rightmost panel is a memorial to former Michigan Governor John Judson Bagley titled Abu Ben Adhem. The window has this name because it depicts a scene from a poem of the same title by the English romantic poet Lee Hunt. A line from that poem, quote, write me as one that loves his fellow man, is inscribed on the lowermost plaque of this panel. The windows stood facing Woodward Avenue for more than 40 years until the 1930s, when that street was widened to accommodate a growing city. At that point, the original church was heavily reconstructed around the shifting streetscape. On the left side of your screen, an image from around 1906 of the church as it was built. On the right, an image probably from the 1970s, showing how heavily it was altered in rebuilding. Notice that the wall on which the windows stood has been pushed back away from the street, and a number of details, like the front turret and closed staircase, or the open entrance porch, have been altered in the change. At that point in the 1930s, the windows were removed from the building, as the Unitarian Church merged with the nearby Universalist Society and found another home nearby on Cass Avenue. In the 1950s, the windows were gifted to the DIA. Although we can only imagine how they would have looked in their original home, with Lafarge's delicate colors and surfaces contrasting against the rough-hewn sandstone of the building, we're now able to examine up close the techniques that made Lafarge one of the leading stained glass artists of the 19th century. For many centuries, stained glass artists had worked with a painstaking technique of silver staining and enamel painting on glass that emphasized the contrast between colorless translucent panels and those with highly saturated color. Instead of painting on glass, as earlier artists had done, 
Lafarge developed a technique that allowed him to paint with glass. To learn more about the historic technique of stained glass art, I would encourage all of you to watch a video made by my colleague Chaz Kirchhoff about the 16th century Swiss stained glass window you see on the left side of your screen. This new technique was only natural for Lafarge. Although he had studied originally to become a lawyer, he changed course after a visit to Paris, studying art in France, and upon his return to the United States in New England and New York. You can see on your screen the delicate touch that Lafarge brought to rendering the drapes of textiles and the gaze of the human figure in this watercolor from 1900 that probably recalls the similar effect he achieved in stained glass for the First Unitarian Church in Detroit. Lafarge's revolution in glass was the introduction of a number of techniques. He pioneered, along with his chief rival and peer, Louis Comfort Tiffany, the use of opalescent glass for stained glass windows. The milky and iridescent finish of those panels created a delicate translucence in modulating color. He also encouraged artists to manipulate glass when it was hot to create contrasting surfaces, some smooth and slick, others irregular and rippled. He then layered different panels together to create a laminated surface in which light passed through, sometimes to very opaque, and sometimes to very bright effect. The overall result is a remarkably delicate composition using the rigid medium of glass to create an image that almost looks as if it was painted in watercolor. We are so fortunate that these windows have found a permanent home at the DIA. And when we reopen, I hope you will all come to visit them and marvel like I do at the remarkable skill that Lafarge introduced into this ancient art.